A beloved 80s mascot was suddenly retired without warning. The reason behind this retirement? Well, let's just say it involved an angry, paranoid schizophrenic hostage situation. Today's case takes place in the late 80s. Mascots were everywhere. Every brand in existence had some sort of kooky little animal creature mascot. One of these brands was none other than the beloved Domino's Pizza Chain, which was known for being the crappiest pizza, but also the cheapest. He loves to make you a hot pizza ice cold. <laughs> Call Domino's Pizza and avoid the noise. In the Domino's commercials at the time, Domino's employees were in a constant, never-ending war against some sort of little elf gremlin thing in a bunny suit called the Noid. The Noid had a sci-fi cold ray that would turn pizzas cold and made it his mission to make the cheese on the pizza stick to the top of the box. This character was strange and notably ugly as hell, but somehow managed to capture enough of an audience to become quite a hit and even a household name. With animations made by Will Vinton Studios, the studio that made the California Raisins animations, he was set to become a success for quite some time. He even got his own merch, his own toys, and even starred in two different video games, neither of which are good. However, the Noid wasn't going to be around much longer. And it wasn't even really his design or the idea of associating pizza with being cold and sticky. It was something much more unexpected. A lot of people loved the Noid very deeply, maybe even as much as their own children. But one man took it a lot more seriously and sinisterly. This is where we had a man named Kenneth Lamar Noid, a 23-year-old man with paranoid schizophrenia who happened to share his last name with the titular character. He believed that the ads were a personal attack against him, and the character was a caricature made simply to mock him. Who did he feel was behind all of this? Well, none other than the owner of the Domino's franchise, of course, he thought. After reaching his limit with these ads, he completely lost it one cool January Monday morning in 1989. He grabbed a revolver and headed out to a local Domino's restaurant in Chambly, Georgia, a suburb of Atlanta, where he planned to exact his revenge. Armed with his 357 Magnum revolver, he went rushing into the restaurant at around 11 in the morning. He told the employees to stay back, not to get any closer, and oddly enough, to call the police. He told them that the Domino's owner, Tom Monahan, had stolen his name. He forced the two employees to call the Domino's headquarters to convey his demands. He wanted $100,000 in cash and a white limousine to use as a getaway car. He fired off two warning shots to get his point across, but he didn't hit either of the employees or any notable objects in the store. He then took his hostages and waited for the police to arrive. When the police got there, he continued demanding his 100 k and a getaway car. However, now he also wanted a book, a copy of a book called The Widow's Son, a 1985 novel about secret societies in prison. He then fired four more warning shots out into the ceiling. Officers, however, did not return fire. The police noted that Noid was acting very irrationally and that they were having a lot of problems communicating with him. They offered to give him a copy of The Widow's Son in exchange for one of the hostages. However, he refused this offer once they did bring him the book. So he ended up with neither the book or the money or, of course, the big white limousine. After a while, Noid started getting really hungry and decided that he'd have some of those good old Domino's pizzas, ordering them to make two pizzas to his exact specifications. He sat down and started eating the pizzas, and for the first time, he took his gun out of his hand and put it down on his lap. It was at this point that the hostages used this chance to escape. They ran out of the store shortly after 5 p.m. By this point, the SWAT team had been negotiating with Noid as he held the two hostages for over five hours. He turned his back for a minute and one ran out the door, said one of the officers. The second one then ran for the door and fortunately he was not shot at. Realizing he just lost all of his leverage, Noid surrendered to the police just a few minutes later. Luckily, the hostages were completely unharmed and the police were able to arrest Noid without further incident. He was taken into custody shortly after. After the whole ordeal was over, the police chief at the time, Reed Miller, told local reporters, He's paranoid. He is very irrational. He is very hard to talk to. According to some detectives who were working on the case, Noid had psychological problems, and they said, he is having an ongoing feud in his mind with the owner of Domino's Pizza about the Noid commercials. Apparently, he thinks they're aimed at him. 
After interrogating Noid and talking to him for a while, police learned of his internal feud with Tom S. Monahan, the owner of Domino's Pizza, who was living in Ann Harbor, Michigan at the time. Despite being so far away, Noid felt that Tom would often break into his apartment, look around, and watch him. They learned that Noid did have a criminal record before all of this, but it was mostly uh, smaller domestic disputes. In the end, Kenneth Lloyd was hit with all sorts of charges, including uh, kidnapping, aggravated assault, theft by extortion for requesting that $100,000, uh, finally possession of a firearm during a crime, and he was held without bond. Once his trial came along, he was found not guilty by reason of insanity. The DeKalb County Superior Court judge at the time, Curtis V. Tillman, ordered that Noid, a resident of Albany, be removed from the county jail and placed into the custody of the State Department of Human Resources. The assistant public defender, W. Edward Netherly, told reporters that Noid was set to be sent to the Georgia Mental Health Institute, where he had already spent three months in the previous spring. Kenneth Noid was set to remain there, in the state's care, until the doctors were able to determine if he was ready for release. After that, he was going to have to apply for parole. He was described by a psychiatrist at the facility as acutely psychotic. This incident was, as you can assume, the reason that Domino stopped using the Noid as a mascot. However, the company denied up and down that this was actually the reason. It was pretty undeniable though, as the whole thing had become a massive PR disaster, with headlines poking fun at the incident all over the United States. I mean, they had such witty zingers as Domino's hostages couldn't avoid the Noid this time. Classy. Kenneth Noid spent the next three months in a mental institution and was eventually released under certain terms, but then unfortunately he went on to end his own life just a few years later in 1995. After almost 15 years, Domino started testing the waters when it came to bringing the Noid character back. It had been long enough that a lot of people had nostalgic memories of the character, but very few remembered the hostage incident. Domino's released a limited run of about a thousand Noid-themed t-shirts in December of 2009, and it seemed to go pretty well. Then, in 2011, the character was brought back in an ad campaign that mainly appeared on the Domino's Facebook page. And in May of 2011, he officially reappeared on TV again for the first time in stuffed animal form at the end of a commercial promoting a new one-topping pizza deal. On the 25th birthday of the character, he was given yet another video game, the Noid Super Pizza Shootout. After that point, the Noid appeared from time to time in smaller roles related to the company here and there. In 2016, he was featured on the Domino Spectacular Pinball Adventure Pinball Machine, was in even more commercials, and was even tattooed onto the arm of a contest winner. He even got a spot in a Crash Bandicoot mobile game, of all things. Then, in 2021, the character finally returned to TV in a very odd form, with his face appearing in a glitchy fashion over a shot of meals introduced in a coupon promotion. He was then officially announced to return as their mascot. It seems that after 15 years or so, enough time has finally passed, and we don't have to avoid the Noid any longer. So once again, thank you for watching my video. If you found it interesting, please give it a like. It really helps out with the algorithm. And if you like stories like this, feel free to subscribe as I talk about them quite a bit. If you feel like it, go ahead and add me on social media. I mean, you know how YouTube is. If anything ever happened to the channel, that would probably be the only way you'd ever hear about it. If you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I keep linked down in the description below. There you can see videos early and uncensored every time I upload them. Speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. JB Funk. Raven, Entrepreneur, Grack, Salad, Kevin, AMCMT, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Tang, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Wafrans, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Marsh, Buffazerk, Rinsenstein, Kim Peak, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Maine, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You are all pretty kitties. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you, and good night.